it um, affects the levels of certain hormones in the body and it does it uh, quite quickly. We notice an effect on the uh, risk for committing child sexual abuse in only two weeks and it also lasts for uh, uh, up to three months in just one uh, injection. Hello and welcome to another episode of Prostasia Foundation's podcast broadcast series, Sex, Human Rights and CSA Prevention. Today I'm speaking with Christopher Rahm, who is a psychiatrist and researcher at the Karolinska Institute and the principal researcher at the Priatab and Prevent It projects. Thank you very much for joining us today, Christopher. Thank you for having me. So you've just released a new scientific paper about a promising new way of reducing sexual offending against children by people with pedophilic disorder. Can you tell us in a few sentences a bit more about what you've discovered? Actually, I think the main finding, we're looking back on it, is that it's actually possible to do this kind of research. That it's possible to, to apply good scientific methods in this field too. So that, is, uh, that was uh, very good to get a, you know, evidence of that. But um, another thing was that I noticed that patients contribute so generously to this kind of research. And that is also something I think is a bit new. Uh, to take part in, uh, in clinical trials involving pharmaceuticals in this field. Uh, but more specifically, what I found was that um, uh, this pharmaceutical is actually uh, good in, in reducing the risk for committing child sexual abuse at the same time as the patients feel it is good for themselves, that they tolerate it in a good way and that they appreciate the treatment themselves. So what does it do? What does this medication do? It um, affects the levels of certain hormones in the body and it does it uh, quite quickly. We notice an effect on the uh, risk for committing child sexual abuse in only two weeks and it also lasts for uh, uh, up to three months in just one uh, injection. So how do you measure someone's risk of committing child sexual abuse? How do you know that it's gone down and, and how confident can you be about that measurement? Well, it's a combination of uh, what we call static and uh, uh, dynamic risk factors. So what uh, uh, we notice is that two of the most important risk factors for committing child sexual abuse reduce significantly in this short period. First is the, the interest for uh, uh, children per se, but also and most prominently the hypersexuality itself, what you call uh, sex addiction sometimes. So you said that one of the effects is to reduce the interest in children. Is it a cure for pedophilia or is it more of a treatment for the disordered thoughts and behaviours that some pedophiles can experience? It is not at all designed to be a study uh, to find a cure for pedophilia, not at all. It is a study designed to see if the risk factors uh, improve with this treatment. So, um, but as a as a side finding in the study, we found that some of them actually report that they no longer have this um, uh, this this uh, attraction to minors. Actually, not at least in a way that they feel uh, is suffering from this for themselves. So, who is this treatment for? Is it for anyone who experiences sexual attraction towards children, uh, or is there a more narrow class of uh, of candidate for whom this is a suitable treatment? The patients in the study, they are uh, help-seeking, self-identified men with pedophilic disorder. And that means that you not only have a sexual attraction to minors, but it's also combined with suffering or acting out. So those are the men that I have uh, included in the study. And uh, those are the men that I have uh, tried to find a, a therapy for. So um, what were some of the side effects or negative effects, if any, that the patients reported and uh, how prevalent were they? The most, common, the most commonly reported negative side effect was uh, injection um, site problems, it, like uh, some kind of um, pain at the injection site. But now, after I've learned that that could actually be prevented by putting on an analgetic cream before you do the injection. Um, for, for scientific reasons, it, we test one intervention at a time, but of course it should be 
uh, in clinical practice be delivered together with other kinds of uh, interventions as well, such as, such as uh, psychosocial support. So uh, this is not meant as a quick fix, uh, one, you know, one solution uh, for all, but it's, uh, it's, it should be, it should be um, um, regarded as one part of a, of a bigger um, therapy package. So were there any difficult ethical questions that you had to deal with when deciding on your research methods? When it comes to ethics, I think the most important thing is that we now are able to leave uh, the, the old way of looking at this, that you need to kind of sacrifice one person's well-being to save someone else, to sacrifice, for example, the person with pedophilic disorder, his uh, well-being to, sacri- to, to help the child. That is uh, no longer something that you have to, to, uh, um, to do. Instead, we can uh, uh, offer uh, a, a, a therapy package that is um, appreciated, well appreciated by the patient at the same time as it has a uh, risk reducing effect. So that was uh, the major ethical um, issue in the study, I think. But then, as you say, there are some ethical problems that we need to face before when, when we did the de- when we designed the study. And one such thing that the ethical review board uh, commented on was that we uh, compare the the medicine with placebo. Is it uh, ethically um, okay to give some of these men um, pedof- um, placebo instead? Uh, but we, we found it actually was. And uh, then the other thing is uh, t- how to protect the children at risk, because in some cases there are actually children at risk of being harmed around these men in the study, because some of them were really high risk, and that was another thing that we needed to deal with. So uh, how, how did you deal with that? Like if there was a case where someone is at was at a very high risk of acting out, uh, what more could you do uh, in those cases? Specifically, if they were to be given a placebo, uh, how did you deal with that? We asked them at every occasion if they knew of any identified children at risk of being harmed. And in that case, we reported to the social authorities in accordance with Swedish law. Uh, And uh, we did it, uh, you know, very transparently together with the patient, they were um, informed about that on beforehand, that we, uh, that we uh, had that question at every occasion they came to us. And then also, these patients uh, are more closely monitored than any other patients almost in, uh, in healthcare, seeking help for pedophilic disorder. So we think that we had a very close um, and um, very good uh, overview of their situation. So uh, in practice, it was not a problem. In, uh, I think it was a handful of cases we sent in notices of concern to social authorities, but actually the patients themselves uh, were okay with that. Hmm. So that's another uh, question I wanted to ask you. So these patients had voluntarily uh, agreed to this uh, treatment. Um, do you fear that now that this treatment has been discovered and assuming that it is widely accepted, Could it be used against patients uh, without their permission? Is that something that raises an ethical concern? Uh, Absolutely. Uh, As you say, every patient uh, had uh, signed an informed consent uh, before entering the study. And so no one was in the study involuntarily or so. Uh, They were uh, um, very well informed about all the risks that they... And they were also allowed to to, uh, leave the study at any moment without uh, any questions asked or so. Uh, but uh, almost everyone actually uh, completed the whole study. So they came from all over Sweden. Some of them traveled more than 500 kilometers to get to the study center three times uh, during three months. So they were highly motivated and they uh, really wanted to, you know, uh, serve science with facts. They, they, they are sick and tired of uh, being um, regarded uh, with um, uh, prejudices, prejudices and uh, uh, meeting professionals uh, that don't uh, want to know the truth. So I, my, um, my experience was that they uh, were very collaborative to, you know, to, um, to help us to uh, get the true facts in this study. So, um, but your question about involuntary treatment, I want to say that um, medicine and psychiatry should never um, 
contribute or help with corporal punishment in any sense, uh, whether it is for uh, sexual offenses or any other kind of um, uh, immoral acts or um, criminal acts. So uh, this medicine should never be used as corporal punishments. But in some legislation, it is possible to treat patients with pedophilic disorder against their will. Uh, so uh, we can do in Sweden too, but uh, it's uh, hardly never used with uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, uh, but uh, that needs to be up to uh, every country to take a decision about. Um, I mean, when, as a scientist, when you uh, serve... Um, when you uh, publish a um, report like this, you you lose control over it when it's out there. You, you cannot uh, take responsibility of how different doctors or so will use this information. But uh, on the good side, it, it is that uh, the patients actually report they feel helped by this and they feel relieved by, by this medication. Not all, but uh, a majority. Hmm. So I was wondering, should uh, patients under 18 be considered for this treatment if they're also suffering from pedophilic disorder? I know that wasn't part of this study, but uh, is that uh, something that can be considered in the future or do you think a different approach should be required for them? I think a different uh, approach could uh, um, be uh, should be explored uh, instead of uh, pharmaceuticals that, act that actively... Uh, interact with the hormonal systems in the body. Uh, you should be adult, I think, before you um, before you um, use this uh, medicine. And um, but that is a very good question. I mean, many of uh, the sexual offenses against minors are committed by youths, and um, we start to get a few pieces of evidence on how to treat people with uh, pedophilic disorder that are adults, but we almost know nothing about how to help people in, uh, in their teenage years with this uh, condition. So, so it's you a mentioned uh, research question, I'd say. Yes, indeed. So uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, this should be part of a, a package of, of different interventions. So what are some of the other uh, treatments that could be considered for people who are struggling with pedophilia, um, uh, aside from the pharmaceutical? I think this um, psychotherapeutical approach uh, called multisystemic uh, uh, treatment, something like that, should be uh, applied. Uh, as a general principle, you should start with, uh, it's important to use evidence treatment as far as possible and also tailor it to the individual. Uh, and if you're not offered uh, a therapy that have any support in science, you should ask to be uh, included in a randomized trial. That is my um, advice. And if there are no um, studies going on at the center where you seek help, then you should uh, really um, challenge your therapist to seek out evidence for the recommendation he or she gives you. Mm. So this uh, particular pharmaceutical study is part of uh, a broader program of work that you're uh, leading, um, the Priatub project and the Preventive project. Can you tell us a bit more about uh, what else is involved? Uh, the Priatub project is like an umbrella um, name for several sub-projects. One is this pharmaceutical trial that is now completed. Uh, then we also run a uh, psychotherapeutic uh, trial in which we recruit patients on um, uh, the dark web. It's actually going on right now in the background. Elin is helping out with that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there we test an online psychotherapy based on uh, cognitive behavioral therapy principles to uh, help people that are watching child sexual abuse material for sexual purposes, to help them reduce that or stop that. So that is another trial in the PrioTab program. And then we also do brain imaging to understand the neurobiological basis for, for this condition. And then we do in-depth interviews to understand the more um, you know, psychological dimensions of this. And we also try to uh, develop more um, objective or more reliable risk assessment methods. So uh, let's talk a bit more about the reaching out to users on the dark web because that's quite a fascinating and I think fairly unique approach. Uh, one of the limitations that I know that uh, other um, researchers and clinicians face in different parts of the world is that it may not be legal for them to access these websites uh, on which illegal images are shared. How have you addressed that problem in your work? Sweden is a fantastic country to do this kind of research in. We have very uh, encouraging 
you know, authorities for this kind of research. They understand the value of it and that it is priori prioritized. And uh, so um, when we uh, uh, handed in the ethical uh, application, the application for ethical approval for this study, we had uh, good help from both NGOs or child rights based organizations to help us design the study and also from the police actually. And uh, uh, in Sweden it is possible to uh, watch child sexual abuse material for scientific purposes. But at the same time, we say we, we um, in the study we never click the links that we um, know lead to uh, see some uh, material. Sometimes it can happen that we see something, but uh, it is not at all that we seek out that kind of material. So uh, you must have a fascinating window into what's going on in these forums during the lockdown period, because I've I've heard. Uh, you know, uh, at least people saying that there must be an increase in uh, the use of these abusive uh, forums. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, that's very, that's, uh, uh, that's totally correct. Uh, they say sometimes that the coronavirus, um, that children are not a risk group for the coronavirus. <laughs> that is, uh, from our perspective, complete BS, because uh, we see that uh, 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 a surge of new people in these forums, um, and uh, they are like aggressive than normally, and uh, there seem to be some kind of new, um, the social hierarchy in these forums uh, seem to be challenged now with all these new people, so they try to, you know, um, um, be more, what do you say, more aggressive than the other ones, and to... Uh, to share more uh, newly produced material, and some of them are also explicitly, you know, celebrating the fact that so many children are, at, uh, are now at home and available to be uh, groomed and so on. So, um, and when they close down schools and the children are at home with their computers, it is a new way for perpetrators to reach out to them. So, um, yeah, it, we, we see uh, the, the climate is, is changing now in these forums. And, um, but at the same time, this is uh, something that we consider like a symptom of, uh, mm. of the condition that we try to help them with. They don't do this for, um, uh, how do you say, uh, some of the administrators on the forums, they say, when they see us in the chat forums and they see our ads, they say, we're here for the same purposes as you are. We try to help uh, the persons in the chat to get relief from their anxiety because many are out there to to uh, just uh, handle the life situation to, uh, you know, sexual outlets is a, is a way of um, reducing anxiety. And, um, and in some sense, they are right. We, um, we try to, um, uh, to find ways into helping them with their situation and to um, both, anal the, in the therapy, they analyze their current life situation. What are their immediate needs? What are the long-term um, goals for their lives and try to build on that to, to help them to find another lifestyle than, than the one that is uh, based on them being out on these forums and uh, changing and you know, sh sharing and, uh, and watching CISAM. So is there a, um, a level of hostility uh, towards you for your presence on these forums or are you accepted for for people who are wanting to seek help and, and discontinue this, uh, what they're doing? It's a mix. Uh, some, uh, on some forums, we are kicked out almost immediately. Uh, but uh, on, on some forums, uh, we are more welcome. And, um, and uh, we have found our place there. And, and now, in, in the start, many thought that we were maybe undercover agents or so. And still some uh, always, you know, post warnings. This is LEA, you know, coming at you uh, when we post our ads. Don't click the link or so. Uh, but we, we are not, we don't have, uh, we don't have, a, a, you know, a hidden agenda with our project. We, we're out there to help from, from academia and from healthcare. So um, as time goes by, they learned that and uh, we get more friendly, um, more friendly, you know, um, encounter for more and more of them and we have this mm. far recruited i think 47 um 
online um, uh, perpetrators. So, uh, and that is quite much. We actually challenge the Swedish police. They, uh, around 100 a year, are put behind bars in Sweden because of uh, sexual offences against children, and we try to to reach a higher number than that, <laughs> to be included in our study in which we uh, try psychotherapy. Well, I mean, that's excellent because prevention is so much better than uh, prosecuting people after they've offended, isn't it? It's, um, society needs many strategies at the same time, and we, uh, we try this new strategy. And as you say, it's a, it's a new thing. Yeah. So just to change topic again, I believe you've also recently been involved in advising the producers of a film about pedophilia. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a bit about that? And, and maybe what did they approach you about? How did you help them? Uh, yeah, there is a new film from Sweden um, that is now sh being shown on film festivals and so on. It had its world premiere just a few months ago on the Gothenburg Film Festival. And I was in the um, I was in the cinema, and it was you know people were standing up and uh, applauding after. It was a it's a very strong uh, film. It really moves you. Uh, it's a film about some a man with pedophilia who uh, who decides to uh, reveal it to his uh, his uh, sister and brother. Uh, min terapeut har sagt att jag själv ska ta ansvar för att inte utsätta mig för uh, vissa situationer och saker. Vad är det du inte ska utsätta dig för? And uh, it's really moving. And uh, I, I have not been involved in like writing the manuscript or so, but I, I read it and I gave some comments to the to the production team behind. And um, um, yeah, it's a, it's a very good film. I recommend anyone to to see it. It challenges you. Uh, it challenges your um, your view on this topic. What's the name of the film? I'm a pedophile. Well, uh, if there is one thing that you wish the general public knew about the work that you do, since it is a very controversial area, what is the one thing you, you wish they would know? Um, I'd say uh, challenge your prejudice and uh, be open to, um, be open to uh, facts and to be optimistic. Uh, all the news we get around this are dark and... Uh, and uh, you have this dystopic feeling when you read the, when you read the news and you see the increasing numbers of children being hurt and uh, people with uh, pedophilia being uh, met with um, you know being uh, not helped when they seek help so uh, but it's a, it's a good reason now to feel optimistic things are changing um, we get more and more uh, scientific evidence on how to uh, how to move forwards and how to uh, how to change the situation. Excellent. Well, congratulations uh, on the publication of this latest paper and uh, and good best wishes for more fruitful research to come. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching this episode of Sex, Human Rights and CSA Prevention. We'll be back again next month with a new interview subject. So to make sure you don't miss it, please subscribe, which you can do by clicking the button you see right here if you're watching on YouTube. And you can also donate to help us with our work. Thanks again, and we'll see you next month. Bye for now.